the flow, but I'm just going to pick about five, six areas. First, as this year is coming to an end, and in 2019, get ready for an overflow of the goodness of God. I declare overflow of goodness, good fellowship, good heritage. Psalm 16 verse 5 and 6, good heritage follows your family. I said good heritage follows your family. The Lord is a portion of my inheritance and my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. I declare in this season of your life, good heritage, good heritage, good heritage following your house. Good counsel will come to your spirit. Psalm 16 verse 7 and 8. Heaven will counsel you. You are about to take a step. God will tell you what step to take. If you are meant to go right, you say go right. Turn left. He will tell you if anything is going to hurt you, it shall be exposed to you. I declare in this season of your life, you will live in the overflow. Somebody say a big amen. Christianity is not about age. It's about stage. When you learn how to walk with the Holy Spirit, you will find that when others are complaining, you are having to be explaining your blessing. So get ready for overflow of goodness. I said overflow of goodness. Good hope. You will be so hopeful in 2019. This year is going to end with such testimony. Psalm 16 from verse 9 to 11 says, Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest <laughs> in hope. Some things have not manifested now, but because of hope, they will manifest. Faith is now, hope is tomorrow. There are some things you've been trusting God for. You fasted, you have prayed, you have cried to the Lord. I declare and decree this Sunday morning that there will be an overflow. In this house, there will be an overflow. I declare that there will be an overflow. God will give you testimony. If you believe it, say yes. I speak into the life of the young of old that there will be an overflow. You will look at your life, you wonder, what did I do to receive all this? I stand on this altar today and I prophesy an overflow. Overflowing favor. Overflowing blessing. Shout yes! Put your hands together. Give God a praise. Come on. Not only in the goodness of God, but you will overflow in the grace of God. I said you will flow in the grace of God. I declare again you will overflow in the grace of God. What does that mean? It means grace will so abound. Romans chapter 5 verse 20. Grace will so abound in your life. Grace, charis in Greek, or I mean in, in Hebrew, favor, grace, and mercy are sister words. So sometimes when they say favor, mercy will show up. When they say mercy, grace will show up. So the three of them are tripartite beings. They are always together. If grace is in your house, mercy must be there. If mercy is in your house, favor must be there. So I prophesy abundant grace. I said abundant grace. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but we are sin abounded. Grace did much more abound. <laughs> Grace is God doing things in your life which you cannot achieve. Grace is bringing to your house a blessing beyond your age. A blessing beyond your strength. Grace is God turning situations around and surprising you. So that when they've written you off and said she can never recover... You did not only recover, you overtook them. Who am I talking to this morning? Grace is coming to your house. I said, grace is coming to your house. If you believe it, say yes. Every cup of affliction you've seen in recent time, grace will overcome it. I said, grace will overcome it. Isaiah 51, 
every wilderness you have been through in recent time, I declare and decree, you are coming out of the wilderness. You are coming out of the wilderness. You are coming out of the wilderness. Somebody scream, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. In the name of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, I'm coming out. I declare today that God will turn your desert to become like a garden. I said your desert will be like a garden. I declare again your desert will be like a garden. Put your hands together. Give God a praise. Give him the praise. Grace will increase in your life. Grace will crown your efforts. Grace will bring you joy. Grace will silence your enemy. Some of you, you've been through some hurtful memories. Grace will heal your mind. I said grace will heal your mind. In Genesis 41, verse, verse, verse 50, 51 and 52, they, Joseph looked at his sons and he gave them names that showed that grace had healed all the things he had been through. He called his first son Manasseh. And Joseph called the first name Manasseh. For God said, he hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And he named the second child Ephraim, for God had caused me to be fruitful in the land. If Manasseh was to handle his pain in the past, Ephraim was to bless his future. Today I declare grace that will heal your past is resting on your life. Every evil thing they ever said about you, the blood of Jesus erases it. I said the blood of Jesus cancels it. I said the blood of Jesus erases it. The blood of Jesus cancels it. This morning I declare your future is blessed. Your destiny is blessed. Your path will shine. If you believe, say I receive it. Say it again, I receive it. Grace, grace, grace. Grace is greater than all our challenges. When God decides to grace you, some people had better sit tight because they will be in shock. They will even be asking you, what did you do to receive this? When grace remembers you in a 24-hour period, zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. A young man was forgotten in a small town in a small town in Israel called Lodeba. Lodeba means no grass, no future, no destiny, no blessing. His leg was broken by his nurse who was running away from imaginary enemies. She broke his leg. She gave him a bad name which means bringer of shame. All these things happened in his life. But then one day, King David remembered him. 2 Samuel chapter 9 from verse 1 and David said, is there anyone at all? Anyone? You see, there's no name there. They didn't say Chidebere. They didn't say Emmanuel. They didn't say Abiodun. They said, is there anyone? Is there anyone here that God can show mercy? I said, is there anyone here that God will show kindness? Somebody say, I'm here. Yeah. Say it again. I'm here. Yeah. Hallelujah. The servant of Saul said, they called the servant of Saul saying, oh, uh, your majesty, there's one person but he's crippled. And the king said, did I put that condition? Cripple or no cripple? I said, anyone, anyone. And they brought, they brought the young man Mephibosheth. And the king said, from now on, she will be eating at my table. Do you know what that meant? The next morning, they set breakfast and they went to call him. Sir, you're going to be at the breakfast table. The king will be there and it is protocol that you sit before the king comes. When he got to breakfast, Solomon was seated on the left. Absalom was seated at the right. Other princes were seated. Here is a cripple seated with them. And you wouldn't know it's a cripple unless you go under the table. And if you go under the table, the world will ask you, what are you looking for? Grace! 
Oh grace, grace, oh grace, grace will pull you out, grace will set you free, grace will turn you around, grace will bless your life, grace will take you forward, shout I receive it, say I receive it, put your hands together, give God a praise, give him the praise. David looked at the young man. He said, not only will you, he said, I'm going to restore everything they took from you. Every of your father's properties. Lands belonging to your father. I will restore it to you. Look, you don't know what, I, what we're talking about. This young man was eating leftover food. He depended on other people. If they didn't remember him, he'll be in hunger. But one day, Grace, remember it. Somebody here, your story will change. Your story will change. Your story will change. I said, Your story will change. Alizonata Yanogus Gibria, Aleroshka, Ablenis Colere Rebrodi. I don't care what your age is, but I declare this morning. What your fathers could not do in a lifetime, you will do in a short time. You will do in a short time. What your father could not do in 10 years, you will achieve in the next 10 months. I said you will achieve it. You will achieve it. You will achieve it. Say I receive it. Say it again, I receive it. Put your hands together, give God a praise. The king restored all the land to him, but the king said, even though you now have all this property, you are my son. You eat in my palace. Level changed. Association changed. Who you see determines who sees you. Who you hear determines who hears you. From today, I pray for you. Good association in your life. Good connections to your life. Good association in your life. Good connections. Summer say I receive it. Put your hands together. Give God a praise. Oh, bless his name. Sit down, sit down, sit down. When you live in the overflow, you don't only live in the, in the overflow of the goodness of God. You live in the overflow of the grace of God. There should be that distinction. People should know you are a believer. The third overflow I declare in this house is the overflow of the glory of God. The overflow of the glory of God. Get ready to experience the glory in the latter days. The glory of the latter days. I declared Anamosa Kayende Rose. That glory will be on this house. Haggai chapter 2 from verse 6. The day will come in this church. You will come. The preacher can't even preach. Power will fall in the house. Healings will be happening. Miracles will be happening. In this house, the heavens will be shaken. God will stretch his hand. When they bind here, it shall be bound. When they lose, it shall be loose. When they pray, it shall happen. There will be such glory in this house. There will be such anointing in the house. If you believe it, say yes. I release power in this house. I release unction in this house. I release the hand of God in this house. I silence the devils in this house. Declaring it today, I said, glory will fill your life. Glory will fill this church. Glory will fill this ministry. Glory will fill your house. Shout amen three times.
Zechariah chapter 2 verse 5 and verse 8 it said for I the Lord will build a city and then he said after I build a city I'll put a fire around it for I said the Lord will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her glory to God verse 8 for thus said the Lord of hosts after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you for he that touched you touched the apple of his eye when you carry glory they're messing with Jehovah the original translation of that verse he that touches he touches the apple of God's eye actually the original translation was meant to read whoever touches you is poking his finger in the eye of Jehovah hey can you imagine I declare today glory will be on your household glory will be in this church glory will be on your business I declare glory will be on your life I have no doubt there is coming a glory the Hebrew word for it is kayil it is something you wear you will wear kayil in this house you will wear it in this house you will walk in it you will operate in it the choir will sing demons will run away Sickness will run away. Young men and women will heal the sick. Your family will be a blessed place. Your children will experience the anointing. Shout amen like thunder. When you carry kayel or glory, Isaiah 59, 19, people begin to be afraid. They will not just mess with you anyhow. They will know that this woman, this man cannot be pushed around. From today, you will carry such glory. I said, you'll be a carrier of glory. You'll be a carrier of favor. You'll be a carrier of blessing. Somebody say, yes. And when you carry this glory, everywhere you go, God will raise a banner for you. Go back to the village to visit them. Somebody sees and they are trying anything, they will just return to the sender. Favor will be on your house. Testimony will be on your house. Because of glory, your reputation will change. Your story will change. Your light will shine. Isaiah 61 verse 3. Anywhere you enter, they will know that somebody carrying something has arrived. Oh, someone say, I receive it. Anywhere you enter from today, I said anywhere you enter, they will see that you have carried glory. You have showed up with glory. Somebody say, amen. Glory will be on your head. Glory will bring you victory. Every hand that have raised themselves against you, they will bow for your sake. And because of that glory, some doors, some of the members of this church have knocked and that have not opened. Psalm 24 from verse 6. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And let the king of glory come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord God mighty in battle. Who is the king of glory? The Lord God mighty in battle. Who is the king of glory? The Lord God mighty in battle. Who is the king of glory? The Lord God mighty in battle. I declare today the doors are opening. 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 The, are opening. the door of the east is opening. The door of the west is opening. The door of the north is opening. The door of the south is opening. The door of blessing is opening. The door of joy is opening. The door of marriage is opening. The door of childbirth is opening. The door of healing is opening. And not only the global doors are opening for someone this morning. The book of Revelation. John said, and I saw an angel with one foot on land and one foot on sea. That is intercontinental, overseas, 
overland global breakthrough. Glory will open it for you. Lift up your hands. Oh ye gates, let the king of glory come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord God mighty in battle. Who is the king of glory? The Lord God mighty in battle. Who is the king of glory? I used to go to Jerusalem. I used to go to Jerusalem to Israel two times a year. So I used to go preach for God TV. Then I went to the old Jerusalem and saw what they were saying. In Bible times, six o'clock they would lock the gates of Jerusalem. Because the Jews count daytime and nighttime separate. They would lock the gate. So all the goods coming from Lebanon, the glories of Lebanon, the favor of Syria. The blessing of Egypt. When they arrive, they are outside the gate. But when it's 6 a.m. And they open that gate. The blessings begin to flow. I'm saying to somebody, your 6 a.m. has come. The gate is opened. The gate is open. The gate is open. The favor is here. If you believe it, say, I receive it. Isaiah chapter 40 from verse 3 to 5. And because of the glory of God, better days are ahead for you. Better seasons for you. Better days are here for you. Better seasons for you. I said better days are here for you. Mountains will be made low. Crooked places will be made straight. Rough places will be smoothened out. Your journey will be better. Where they said no to you, they will say yes. Where they said no, they will say yes. If you believe it, say I receive it. Say it again, I receive it. Put your hands together, give God the biggest praise this morning. Give him the praise. Whoa. So this morning, I didn't come to talk to you about visiting the overflow, but to live in the overflow. <laughs> Satan will not determine where you live. You will live in the overflow. Sometimes politicians think we are blind. You can see that somebody is saying, I'm here for you, and you can tell it's not there for you. Whatever they like, they do. You, you will live in the overflow. Nigeria will not determine your flow. If the Statue of Liberty can go and take its connection from like three states away, from like three states away or very far away, <laughs> and you are rooted in God, when there is shame around you, there will be fame in your house. When there's failure that you can see, I prophesy on this house and I prophesy on your house. There'll be success in your house. Shout a good amen. amen. Say a better amen. amen. You will live in the overflow. 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 You reach a place in your life where you are not preaching, you are prophesying. Go to England. Where only 30 people go to church. Ended being the person God gave the opportunity because of grace to build the first mega church. And even if we had government come against us once, twice, they kept pushing us into more blessing. 
So right now, our headquarters church is sitting on 24 acres. 24 acres. 24 acres in Britain is not beans. It's not beans, so. And not only 24 acres, 12 buildings were already built before we got there. 12. Our sanctuary will sit 7,000. Pre-built. The whole place is worth 50 million pounds. We bought it for five. So when I preach overflowing grace and overflowing glory and overflowing goodness, you must know I'm making a declaration. I take of that and place on your life today. Shout amen. So let me close. May 2018 and 2019 bring increase in miracles in your life. May it bring the blessings of the Lord. May you experience uncommon promotion. May you experience the health of God. May the sound of celebration be heard in this house. Young and old, you will walk in bumper harvest. You will handle abundance. You will experience godly surprises. Receive divine ability. Receive divine grace. Enjoy divine resources. Enjoy soundness of mind. Say amen three times. Now give God the highest praise. Come on. Give him the praise. Whoa. Whoa. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Were well, you blessed this morning? You will walk in a common overflow. Harvest will meet harvest in your life. Yeah. Amos chapter 9 verse 13. Before you finish one harvest, another harvest is ready. And before you finish that harvest, another harvest is ready. I am speaking to someone right now that behold the days are coming in David Christian Center when the man preparing the ground for sowing is overtaking those who are reaping last year's harvest. And he's telling them, ah, please, we could not do quick now. So please move fast now. And then the one who is reaping is overtaking the treader of grapes. The one treading grapes is overtaking the sower of seed. And mountain will drip with sweet wine. Somebody say, we receive it. Amen. Say it better, amen. Give God praise one more time with your hands. Come on. Bless the Lord. Oh, bless. Oh, bless. Oh, bless. When I was coming, I told the pastor, what do you want me to do? He said, sir, just do what you feel led to do. I said, I want to submit to what you want me to do. He said, no, sir. You must do what you feel led to do. I feel led to challenge some of you to sow seed, not in my life, not because the church has a need, but it's because it's a prophetic gift I carry. And you only should come forward because you feel led. Sit down, sit down. On Sunday night in KRCC London, we have Sunday night service in our church in London. I insisted that everybody must bring their seed to the altar. A young man likes to sit at the back, very humble, very quiet, nice person. Did a lot of souvenirs and put in our bookshop. But that day he said, the Holy Spirit told me, you can't disobey your pastor. You got to go to the front to sow the seed. So he came to the front along with everybody that Sunday and I put his seed on the altar. Within a short time, it was a Tuesday, he was going for a major interview. And he couldn't find a blonde and black car, so he saw one of those Ubers. 
and the car comes and it's a, a man from Niger Republic who lives in London who speaks bad English. As they are driving, the driver turns to him and said, how would you like to be the diplomatic representative of Niger Republic to Britain? So he told the guy, I'm a Nigerian, not a Nigerian. The guy said, I don't care. How would you like to be the diplomatic representative of Niger Republic to Nigeria? He said, look, my name is Mr. Abe from Ekiti State, Nigeria. The driver insisted a third time. He said, all you need to do is say yes. And the man said, okay, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, within days, special uh, foreign service envoys had come from Niger Republic to recruit who will operate in that service. And the driver brought him to them. Before our brother, no, Mr. Abe from Ekiti State had become the diplomatic representative of Niger Republic. to Britain. A couple of Sundays later, he came to me, showing me his, his, the keys to his brand new chair, rubber Mercedes, they just gave him. Another said, another couple of weeks, he came to me, he said, I'm just coming from the United Nations meeting in New York, represented, representing Niger Republic. I said, ah, Mr. Abe, from Ekiti State, you will be the next testimony I share. You'll be the next testimony. You'll be the next testimony. The second testimony I share with you. I went to preach in Ivory Coast. I'll be there in the next, I mean, in nine days' time again. Shared people that people should sow a seed to experience a 24-hour turnaround. Listen, there are people who are attacking seed in the body of Christ. And they do not realize this is the protocol of our kingdom. These same guys who attack seed, they are football supporters. How many man you supporters are here? Let me see your hand. And no, don't shout to just raise your hand. Raise your hand, let me see. Look at these people. Their club is about to buy a 19-year-old boy for 200 million pounds. What does he do? Kick a bag of wind around the stadium. 200 million pounds is a lot of money. To give a 19-year-old boy, who is the owner of the money? These supporters. They buy the tickets. They buy the season ticket. DSTV pays British English Premier League 80 million pounds a year for you to watch it. But when it comes to what will turn people's round, the enemy shuts their eyes. Taxation is the protocol of Nigeria, and they have woken up to tax. Taxation is a protocol of Britain. I pay 40% tax in the United Kingdom because of the level of my income. The protocol of the kingdom of God is tithing. It is the protocol of seed. It is the protocol of first fruit, vows. That's our protocol. If you don't believe in the protocol of a place, you don't belong. So seed sowing have turned our own lives around. I sow seed every day. Two weeks, two weeks ago, Pastor Femi, who is our supervisor for KICC, Nigeria, was showing me the building for KICC Akure. I couldn't see a platform. I said, how much will they build the altar? Because I love building altars. I said, I don't know how much, but here's a million naira. Let me know the balance. I build the altar. Anywhere I go, I see they are building a church because it has turned my life around. It has blessed me beyond measure. So this morning, when I challenge to seed you need to break the face of the enemy and do something you've never done before. Is somebody hearing me? So I was in Ivory Coast, and I was preaching, told people to sow a seed to experience a 24 hour turnaround. Is there 24 hours in the Bible? 11 times or more. It was within 24 hours that David's life changed. Only brought food to his brothers. By evening, the women were singing his name. That day, he did not sleep at home, he slept in the palace. His association changed. His clothing changed. His demeanor changed. Is there 24 hours in the Bible? Oh, Joseph came out of prison today, and after 13 years' problem, he experienced 13 miracles. Within a 24-hour period, came out of jail. They changed his demeanor. 
He appeared before the king. He interpreted the king's story. They made him prime minister the same day. They gave him the daughter of the high priest, who is also in the executive of that country. They made him to be the governor of the land. They gave him the second chariot. They gave him the second palace, all in one day's business. So I was preaching. I was preaching in Ivory Coast. Told people to sow seed. The pastor of the church took the tape to the wife of the former president, Long Agbagbo, who has been locked up in the Netherlands, but his wife was locked up in Ivory Coast. He took the tape to her. When she listened, she took all she had and sent it to the pastor. I said, this is my seed. She needed $10,000 to pay her lawyers. Three or four nations away in Benin Republic. Somebody was teared up to send $10,000 to her daughter. They passed judgment that she should be in jail 20 years after she paid her lawyers. Next year, I went there again, challenged people to the same seat. She was among the first from the prison. The same people who passed the judgment set up a tribunal. The tribunal quashed the 20 years. She's now free. <laughs> going to ask people to sow two seed here, not because the church has a need, but because you need a testimony. And when I say 24 hours, it's not just 24 hours, it's in cycles for the rest of this year. For the rest of this year. God will just be bringing cycles of favor, cycles of testimony, cycles of a turnaround. Shout amen. Amen. The second seed, Daniel chapter 1 verse 20, is a 100% turnaround to your life. Daniel came through the backwaters as a slave with his friends, but chose not to eat the food of the king. He said, test us and see what our God can do. And within weeks, the Bible says they were 10 times better than everybody. 100% live turnaround. The time has come when your life will turn around 100%. You will not be telling the story of Lagos. You will be part of the story. Yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah. I said you'll be part of the story. Yeah. As we were driving into this place, I was telling my driver and the police. I said, I knew when they sold this jack on the house, it's 60,000 naira. If I don't get my own, the story I did tell you, you will not just tell stories. Yeah. You will have a testimony. The seed may look big, but you're going to stretch yourself. The first seed is $240. You stand to the left. The second seed is $100. You stand to the right. Stand up and come quickly. I pray for you and hand over the microphone. Don't wait for anybody. Just get out of your seat. You must never miss the opportunity of a prophetic action. Somebody say prophetic action. $100 to the right. $240 to the left. Whatever you give must be a sacrifice. It must stretch you. You must feel it. Come out. $240 to the left, $100 to the right. We respect your sacrifice. And as you are standing, I want you to ask for five uncommon things that God will do in your life in the next 24 hours and in cycles of 24 hours. Lift your voice and begin to ask. Lift your voice and begin to ask. Lift your voice and begin to ask. In the next 24 hours, in cycles of 24 hours, uncommon turnaround, uncommon change, uncommon favor, uncommon blessing, uncommon breakthrough. I'm about to pray because I want to be sensitive and keep to time. I want you to round up your prayer now. Round up your prayer. If there's POS machine, I want you as much as possible. So make sure everything is paid today. POS machine or if you, if you have to use your phone to do the transfers, you do that today. If you don't have everything, whatever you have, you do it. If you bring the remaining, put in an envelope, write on the envelope, 24-hour miracle. Or on the envelope, 100% turnaround. Look at me. I'm about to pray for you. God will give you a testimony. Amen. I'd like you to say a better amen. amen. God will give you a testimony. Amen. I declare again, God will give you a testimony. Amen. I went to Zambia to preach and told people to sow a seed. Found out it was a thousand dollars. 
Apparently, there was a man in the, in the audience who had lost everything, lost his bureau de change, and the owners of the money that with which he started were looking for him. He couldn't pay them. So he sold his car to buy a ticket for himself and his wife and run to England. Then I came and asked people to sow seed. He put the money on the altar and told God, that's my escape money that this preacher said I should give. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't know until 11 years when I went back to preach. I was to speak to business people, executives of banks and insurance, general overseers, and they said there will be a testimony. One very small young gentleman stood up and said, 11 years ago, Pastor Matthew came and asked us to sow seed. I sowed the seed in faith. He said, two weeks later, somebody gave him the money to start all over. He now has six bureau de change. He's bought the sixth floor office facing their general post office. He said, and he will fly 10 and a half hours to come to England to put his offering on the altar. He felt a connection. I didn't understand that kind of faith. A white man was selling a farm in Zambia that is 30 miles. That is from here to Ikoroju, and it's one farm. 30 miles in all directions, 17,000 acres. And the man wants to sell $10 million along with a radio station. He said he traveled to England, put the seed on the altar, went back and bought everything for $1 million. There has to be something that shows the finger of God. Lift your hands. In the next few minutes, I pray for you. Father, you sent me all the way from London, England, to minister to these people. Today, I prophesy on their life that their stories will change. Amen. Their favors will come. Amen. In the next 24 hours, in cycles of 24 hours, uncommon blessing will rest on them. Amen. Uncommon testimony will be their portion. Amen. Favor will rest on them. Amen. Blessing will rest on them. I call in the favor of the east, the favor of the west, the favor of the south, the blessing of the north, uncommon provision, uncommon protection, supernatural turnaround, business turnaround, family turnaround. Change will follow your life. You will never be the same. Your story will change. Jesus' name. Somebody say a good amen. amen. Those of you can use the POS, you use the POS. Those of you who could not, who didn't have all, whatever you have, put it together. Put it together. Everybody in the house, everybody in the house, I don't know if you've taken your offering or you have, I don't know what the part, if they have already done the tithe and the offering. You haven't. So I'll just hand over the, to the pastor to do the rest. But wherever you are this morning, those of you who have the full seat, place it on the altar. Place it on the altar. Or if you have, have you, have you transferred? How many have transferred? How many of you have transferred some of it here? Or you are going to do the POS? Let me see your hand. Lord, I speak into the life of these men and women that as they do the POS, you are putting testimonies in their mouth. You are surprising them. You are shifting things for them. You are silencing the enemy on their behalf. You are wiping their tears. You are making them to celebrate. We we'll rejoice. We say it is done. Give you all the glory, all the praise. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout a massive amen. amen. Let's turn around and welcome your pastor. God bless.